මැද්ද නායකත්ව කවුන්සිලය ඉදිරිපත් කළ කම් මැද්ද V Force Leadership Series සම්මන්තන මාලාවට සහභාගී වූ 10 සංඛ්‍යාත තරුණ ප්‍රජාවට සහ ඔවුන්ට මග පෙන්වා හෙට දවසේ අලුත් නායකින් ලෙස ගොඩ නැගෙන්නට වෙරදුන් අද දවසේ නායකත්වයට අපගේ The Gum at the Vifos Leadership Series. No Navati Idriata. News First Newsline. Hello there and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live. Coming to you live and direct as always from our News First studios here in Colombo. Today on our show... Our guest uh, for this evening is uh, a parliamentarian from the Jatika Janapalavegia, affiliated with the uh, JVP, of course, uh, Dr. Harini Amarasuria. A very good evening, doctor, and welcome to the show. Good evening, Charlotte. Nice to be here. Um, Dr. Harini, it's been quite an eventful few days, to say the very least. Um, yesterday, we saw, uh, we saw a lot of uh, events unfolding in parliament. A um, lot of discussions, a lot of debates, um, accusations swinging left, right and centre. Even today, throughout the course of the day, there were many um, incidents of political significance taking place here mm. in Sri Lanka. However, um, it was you who put, put out a tweet or a post saying that we mustn't lose focus of the real issues mm. of the people. Uh, mm. Dr. Harini, let's start off with some of these real issues. Uh, that the people are facing. Uh, we here at our network have been uh, giving extensive coverage to the issues faced by farmers here in Sri Lanka because at the end of the day uh, an issue for the farmers is an issue for all of us because they are the people who supply us with food. They are the people uh, who we rely on or depend on for food security in Sri Lanka. But the farmers are facing a massive uh, crisis as far as the shortage of fertilizer goes. However, the government says we have brought down enough of fertilizer for this season. This is being created by a mafia. There is no shortage in the market. It's just that people are hiding these fertilizer stocks. Is there truth to this? Well, if that is the case, then still there's a role for the government to play, right? Because the fact of the matter is that the farmers are not getting access to the fertilizer. So mm. whether it's because the government is not distributing or the mafia is controlling the fertilizer, there is a problem. The farmers mm. are facing a problem. Mm. So the government can't just sort of sit back and say, well, I'm sorry, the mafia is controlling the fertilizer industry. They have to intervene and do something. I mean, it's the same thing with the price of rice, mm. right? They keep saying uh, the mafia is controlling the, the, the rice, the paddy production, mm. paddy distribution. Mm. But that's why we have a government, so that mafias are not in control of food distribution and food production in this country, right? So, uh, that, well, that this um, this term mafia is being used to describe mm. or, or to put the blame on mafias for many mm. things, not only uh, rice, but mm. uh, also COVID-19. Mm. Um, there was talks of uh, a mafia uh, mm. around COVID-19, many other issues. But um, the fact of the matter, like you pointed out, is that the government needs to intervene. Uh, however, the most concerning part of this is uh, not just this season, but the government has announced a policy that they will unequivocally ban all chemical uh, fertilizer, agrochemicals, all of that mm. uh, to the country. And farmers are not too happy about this mm. as well. One of the main reasons they point out is the fact that they were not consulted mm. in this matter. As far as your knowledge goes, have farmers been consulted on no. this issue? Farmers have not been consulted on this issue. Shalan, this is a really, uh, really important topic for us to talk about because for one thing, uh, there is no doubt that to move towards organic farming and organic food is, is necessary. Hmm. But it's, uh, it's not something that can happen overnight. There are a lot of factors uh, related to shifting to organic agriculture with this, which this government seems to be completely ignorant about. After years of uh, doing agriculture in a particular way, using fertilizer, you can't suddenly shift to organic. I mean, the, the, the soil needs to adjust to all of this, right? And it's no point, uh, now you know how our farming system, our agriculture system is currently organized, it's that there are small farms, right? So uh, within these small farms, if what happens in this field affects the next field, mm. right? Which is one of the reasons why 
uh, our productivity is, uh, is, is lower than it should be and it will come down even further when we shift to organic uh, mm. agriculture. Fully right? organic. F to fully organic. So, the, so there needs to be a reorganization of, of the way in which we do farming as well. Mm -hmm. If we are to gain the full benefits of this, there should be sort of a way in which we grow similar crops together. There's more co cooperation between farming communities and farmers about, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of reorganization mm -hmm. necessary. This, is a, this requires a systematic plan and a plan that can't be suddenly sort of on a whim overnight implemented. Mm. People have to get used to it. Mm. Farmers have to learn how to do it. Organic uh, fer uh, fertilizer needs to be produced in sufficient numbers. Mm. And even with all of that, the fact of the matter is currently there is no country that is fully organic. Mm. Right now, you, you know, even if you go to the market right now, there's a section selling organic produce. Mm which is usually more expensive, hmm. right? Quite expensive. Quite more expensive. Now, if that, so you also have to think, how are you going to feed an entire country hmm. uh, if the production cost also increases? How are people going to be able to afford this? Hmm. Right? So there are lots of factors to be considered. But the Minister of Agriculture, Mahinda Nanda wasn't too concerned about the reduction in the harvest. He said, you know, if there's a reduction in the harvest, we will, on one hand, pay the farmers for the damages that they've suffered. If there's a reduction in their harvest, we will pay the farmers for that. And uh, for the additional amount that we need to feed the people of this country, we will import from overseas. So two things, uh, Sharon, in that farmers don't want to stay at home and be paid to not do their job. They want to farm. That's not a solution. I mean, these are not, these are people with livelihoods, these are people with dignity, these are people who are, these are not beggars. They want to do their work, right? And that's what they're asking, not to be given money to sit, sit around at home, mm. right? So that's a very patronizing approach to this whole problem. Secondly, if we are going to shift to organic farming because it's healthier for us, my question is, are, then, are we then going to be importing organic food? Or is the food, how are we going to ensure that the food that we are importing is organic? Otherwise, we are back to square one. Hmm. If we have to uh, uh, import chemically produced uh, food to meet the, the, the lack of food production here, the gap in food production, and if this whole endeavor is in order to shift to organic food, hmm. How is that going to make sense? Dr. Haridi, uh, this is where really the opposition has to play a role in representing the people. Although usually, especially in the case of Sri Lanka, whenever a, a political party is given the mandate to govern the country, uh, more often than not, they end up going against the will of the people. Uh, they, go, they end up going against the promises that they gave the people. They end up uh, abusing power, sometimes uh, being drunk on power. Many governments that have come across. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why Sri Lanka shifts governments so often. Uh, currently, the trend is every five years even. Um, uh, Dr. Harini, but we are living in times, uh, in challenging times, because especially of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, there is an issue of how the opposition is going to voice uh, their protest, how they are going to represent the people uh, we saw uh, in Parliament even uh, opposition being raised in the manner of protests in the Parliament House. Uh, there is also a debate on how, uh, a, how uh, moral that is to do it on the floor of the House. Uh, but however, the biggest issue here is that people can't come out to the streets, people can't protest, uh, people are deterred to a certain degree on posting things on social media even uh, due to this um, fake news arrests uh, kind of scheme that the government has announced. How do people protest? How do people show their dissent? Because maybe the government might come out in a couple of months and say, you know, people didn't let us know that they didn't like this. So this is the problem, Shalan, and I think we need to, as the opposition, we have taken a decision that we are, uh, we are going to make our, I mean, that's, that's the role. I mean, because there are so many issues right now, hmm. so many problems that people are raising with us that, um, I, uh, that we are actually very suspicious hmm. about the way in which the government is managing its lockdown, uh, lifting of lockdown, uh, imposing lockdown, because 
uh, we feel that it's more political than health related, right? Because if you really want to control COVID, then the lockdown has to be implemented in a way that it will bring numbers down. Hmm. But as you know what is happening right now, our numbers are not coming down. We are testing fewer people, so then it looks as if the numbers are coming down. We've, it's almost reduced by 50% the tests that we are doing. Is this because we, just on the sides, is this because we don't have enough money? No, I, 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 our suspicion is that we are, we are playing with numbers. We are playing with numbers and we are doing enough to justify a lockdown which keeps people off the streets from protesting. When the government but wants to bring in controversial, controversial pieces of legislation uh, or controversial, controversial decisions. decisions. But it's not imposing a lockdown in a way that will actually manage COVID, right? So if you look on the road today, the only things that are not on the road are pri uh, private and public transport. Anyone who has even a little push cycle is on the road. The private sector is operating. Lots of uh, industries have been um, declared essential services. Hmm. So people have to work. People have to go to work, right? So uh, we, in a way, we, are, we, have, um, uh, we have locked down daily wage workers, right? Self-employed people who are really suffering as a result, hmm. right? And we are, we've, we've, uh, ma we've shut down people who use public transport, hmm. right? So, but that's not managing COVID, which is why we are very suspicious of the way in which this, this lockdown is being imposed. And we feel that it's more political than health driven, right? Because it's keeping people from expressing dissent. And as you said, these uh, limitations on social media, completely unacceptable completely unacceptable and I think it's irony of the highest that a government that manipulated social media to get into power is now trying to control social media when it becomes critical, when it's critical of the government. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have, so you can't sort of use social media to uh, win elections and then when it becomes too hot say okay sorry, shut it down. So, uh, Dr. Harini, uh, there are questions coming in, uh, views being expressed by the people right now who are watching this program right now. They are saying that they rely on the opposition to make their voices heard because mm. there was a message that even came in saying, we're scared of getting killed. Mm. We don't want to get arrested. Mm. What is the opposition doing? I think we, 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 first of all, there are only three of us in parliament representing the party that I represent. Right? So you're speaking on behalf of speaking, three members of the opposition? I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of three members of the opposition and the, and the party that, and the mm. movement that we represent. And I think we've been raising our voice inside and outside parliament uh, in as many different ways as we possibly can. Even though we've been in lockdown, almost on a daily basis, various of our organizations, groups, movements affiliated to us have been extremely active on social media, mm. uh, hosting seminars, hosting webinars, hosting mm. panel discussions, using social media to get our voice across. I know our, uh, some of our student movements also organized an online protest, our youth groups, right? right. If you can't get on the street, at least express your pro pro dissent online. So we've, and we've been speaking out on Parliament. We, we have almost uh, two to three press conferences a week to get mm -hmm. our point across. So within the limitations, we are doing what we can. And I, I have to say, now people are also farmers. You can see are uh, on, on, the, on the farms, on, mm -hmm. the, on the land protesting. Mm -hmm. When that happens, we have to get involved. So we've taken a decision that if the people are, 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 want us out there to be protesting, then we will have to do so. We will have to face the consequences. Even in violation of quarantine regulations? If necessary. We did hold a protest um, uh, two, three weeks ago during the Port City mm. uh, debate. Mm. Uh, and the, the, we, the, but adhering the, to the health guidelines? Adhering to the, to the health guidelines. We mm. maintain distance. We wore masks, all of that. But, uh, I mean, when, when the situation is so dire, we cannot be silent. It, it would be immoral of us to be silent and to sort of uh, bow down to the restrictions that the government has imposed on us.
Well, it's important that um, the government is kept informed of the heartbeat or the mandate of the people. What do the people really want? And that was what we were discussing with uh, Dr. Harini. Uh, there is also, of course, uh, the issue of foreign interventions in Sri Lanka. Are there uh, foreign forces in Sri Lanka? Is this legal? We will get into that subject after this short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Newsline. Bye. News First, Newsline. Mark today, President cites governance based on 10 royal virtues as a precedent. Intelligence officials on site to probe sightings of Chinese nationals in military uniforms. Sri Lanka joins military exercises with Japan and America in Trincomalee. Prison inmates in Mahara and Valikada on a hunger strike. Newsline. Welcome back. You're watching Newsline Live. We're in conversation with uh, Dr. Harini. Uh, Dr. Harini, we spoke about a lot of things before the break, but we promised our viewers that we will speak about this um, fear that people have in Sri Lanka that uh, there are members of foreign military forces on Sri Lankan grounds. Uh, now, this is, of course, if true, uh, if confirmed, is a serious situation. Any information you have in this regard? Uh, I think you, this is in relation to certain pictures that yes. have uh, appeared. Certain video footage that came from the uh, uh, construction project construction of Chisamara Mabatha. Yes. Uh, well, if, if the, those are uh, people, military, foreign mili military, then mm. that's hugely problematic because they cannot function mm. like that. As, as far as we know, as far as parliament has been informed, there are no agreements with any with the Chinese government in this instance allowing Chinese military into the country. Now we do have agreements with the US, mm -hmm. AXA and so far, mm -hmm. where uh, we have a certain agreement with them where, the, where foreign military can make bases here in if, if they need to, mm -hmm. uh, if, there's a, if there's a conflict. Right. right? Now this also it was, is deeply problematic. We, we protested about this. Men for have, we have been protesting about this for many years because we could become part of the, if there's a regional conflict, hmm. we have basically allowed foreign military troops, hmm. we've granted permission for them to operate from Sri Lanka. But Dr. Haridi, now this uh, comes as a surprise because this government promised uh, to safeguard national security, to say no to foreign intervention. They said no to MCC, uh, the MCC agreement with the US. Uh, they said no to foreign soldiers in Sri Lanka. They said Sri Lanka's national security and sovereignty comes first. They've been in power for two years. Why hasn't this been done yet? Shall I we? mean, agreements like SOFA and AXA, why haven't they been? Can, they can easily be revoked uh, by uh, executive fiat or even um, a motion in parliament. Shalana, I think it's very, it's, I think one thing we need to get clear by now, what this government said when they came, when they wanted power and what they're doing when they are in power, are as different as black and white. 
right? So I don't think we need to kid ourselves or ask us why are they doing things differently to what they promised, because that is this government. That is what they're doing. They're not keeping any of the promises. And we can see very, very clearly that it was a very callous and very, uh, a very insulting use of rhetoric and, and manipulating people's fears to get into power. And that now they're doing something completely different. And it's solely become a, 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 a very personal agenda of staying in power and reaping the benefits and privileges of power. That's all it is now. I don't think we should kid ourselves about it being anything else. Um, Dr. Harini, since you uh, spoke about um, keeping the benefits and privileges of parliament, um, just a small, we'll dedicate a small time on this show to discuss this matter. The People vehicle. were very angry about this. Yes. yes. Uh, there was a plan to import uh, luxury SUVs. Yes. Now, you are a first time parliamentarian, yeah. and uh, we saw parliamentarians who have been in parliament for maybe 10, 15, even more than that saying, you know, we need this to serve the people. Uh, we travel about 100 kilometers per day. There are some parliamentarians who come to uh, parliament in the bus. Uh, we need this to serve the general public. Uh, some parliamentarians came out and said, uh, you know, I have three vehicles. I should get three vehicles, but two of them are in the garage. Uh, and I use my personal vehicle, so I need another vehicle. Dr. Harini, do you need a vehicle? No, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what I have. And I've been able to do my job perfectly adequately without a Prado or a whatever it a is. A luxury there. SUV. L luxury X SUV that they were planning to get. I, have, uh, I don't need a, a, a vehicle, neither do my two colleagues. Hmm. Uh, and uh, it's like this. For us, public service is public service. Hmm. You need resources to do your job, certainly. right? But we can't set ourselves apart from the public we serve and consider this a public service. right? Mm. We don't need three vehicles to do our job. Mm. We certainly don't need top-end luxury vehicles to do our job. Mm. We can do our job. And uh, I mean, when, when, a, when a minister says, you know, that I have to go by public transport, we have to keep in mind that a large majority of people in this country do their job using public transport. Mm. They don't have a choice about it. So we can't, then it's, it's up to us to do something to improve public transport. Mm. Having Wouldn't experienced Sri Lanka be a better that. place if all ministers were required to come to parliament in a bus, they'll feel at least what the general well, public goes Well, I think at, really the, at the very least, public transport would then improve, which mm. is something that we think is absolutely essential, right? For, for improving the productivity of workers in this country. And for the, in terms of uh, environment mm. uh, issue, uh, uh, concerns also, a good public transport system is essential. Mm. So if all of us are running around in luxury high-end SUVs, we are never going to understand what it's like to use public transport in this country. So we are then, that affects the kinds of policy choices we make. We, 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 we are so removed then from the experiences of the general public we are, not going to, we, we, we are not going to make policies that actually affect real people, mm. right? So this is why we were of the very firm view, mm. yes, you need resources to do your job, but they can't set you over and above and apart from the public that you're serving, mm. because then you can't do this job. Dr. Harini, we're in the final few minutes of this show, uh, but I've received a question on, on a matter that I meant to speak to you about during uh, the program. Uh, the uh, proposed KDU Act, mm. uh, which is uh, an act, of course, dealing with Sri Lanka's higher education system. Mm. Uh, Dr. Harini, you two were vocal about this mm. and how uh, the people are reacting to this act. Um, there is a viewer who is requesting for details of what exactly is the issue surrounding the KDU Act. Okay, so as you know, the Kotalavala Defense Academy, as it was originally called, was established to train the military uh, in defense, sort of provide higher education and specialized training for the military in defense related matters. Hmm. However, by today, Kotalavala Defense University has expanded much beyond its original vision hmm. and it offers subjects apart from defense related and is also offering uh, entry to civili the civilian population. Right. 
Now, it doesn't have the legislature to support what it's been doing ad hoc, hmm. right? Due to lots of reasons that perhaps we don't have time, time to go into right now. So in 2018, the then government put forward a bill to set up the Kotala, uh, John Kotalavala National Defense University hmm. under the Ministry of Defense, right? Run by the military. Uh, so setting up a parallel university structure managed by the defense. Hmm. There was lots of protests because this leads to militarization of higher education, which, and then eventually uh, this can seep into other areas of society because graduates will then be working in the public sector, private sector, coming through this sort of militarized education hmm. system. There was a lot of protest and the bill got suppressed. Hmm. This government in April brought the bill back. Right, without changing a comma in the bill that was presented in 2018. Right. So it's the same issue has come up come again. Come up again. Right. But so this we, time around, the difference is that the public can't really voice that. This time around, the public, and, and also because there are so many issues that are coming up. We were fighting the Port City Bill. We were fighting, you know, on a daily basis, there are so many issues hmm. that this is just like one of many. Right, and it, and it, it could very easily you know, miss and everyone's Dr. Harini, attention. We're in the final uh, minutes of this show. Yeah. One question that was sent into by uh, sent in to us by one of our viewers. Uh, I believe it's uh, only apt to finish this show on this uh, by this question. Yeah. When will you decide to put your words into action? When we are in power. So you give us power, and we'll put our words into action. There's no problem. That's what we want. Is that a definite guarantee? Because we've that seen political parties who've said the same thing come into power did the complete opposite. No, that is a guarantee. You can mark my words now. If we get into power, we will stick to what we say. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. I can say it with confidence for myself and for my colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Harini, for joining us on our show and uh, expressing your views on these matters that are of concern to the general public of Sri Lanka. Thank you, Shal. And also, a very big thank you to all our viewers out there who, as usual, um, sent in many questions, raising many valid issues. Uh, we only had time for a certain number of questions, and I posed as many of them as I can to Dr. Harini. Thank you very much for tuning in to Newsline. As always, until we meet again, take care and God bless. Madhya Naikatma Councilia Idripatkala, Gam Madhya V Force Leadership Series Samantramana with the Sahabagivu, Daha Sankya the Taruna Prajavata Saha, Own the Magapenba, Heta Tavase, Alut Naikin Lesser Gudamagin at a Veratun.